Good morning and welcome to Worship with Aldersgate. It's so good to see you tuning in today and so good to have all of you here in the room. Today we have a group of folks who have just returned from Down East Maine uh, on the Down East Maine mission trip serving with Neighbors Helping Neighbors doing construction ministry all last week. And so this morning we'll get to hear the report of the team. There were 26 team members that went up during the week that worked hard and so many of you who helped to uh, fund that trip by donating uh, money for the nails and shingles and lumber and all the things we use, the paint, um, and so many of you were praying for us. So we're looking forward to sharing our mission team report with you. And uh, just as we get started, a reminder to please drop any prayer requests that you have this morning in the comments. And we'll weave that into a prayer at the end of the service. If you're watching the service later, still put them in the comments, and we will continue to read them and continue to pray for you uh, after the service live has ended. The question for you today is, have you ever gone on a church mission trip? I know some people in this room will say yes. Some of you at home will say yes. Have you ever gone on a church mission trip? All right. Let's turn it over to Johnny. Now, this is Johnny's last Sunday as an official interim, waiting for our new music director. So if he looks a little extra cheerful, <laughs> he's uh, been serving with great humor, but for a while, and we really appreciate you, Johnny. Thank so you. take it away. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to see all of you. Please stand as you're able to sing um, this praise medley. It's going to be the doxology, which we all know, and for the beauty of the earth.
Amen. I'd like to welcome our children forward for just a little quick conversation. Oh, yay. I love it. Thanks for coming. Scoot over. How's everybody? These are three young ladies who were uh, with the team up in Maine this week on the mission trip. Yeah, you're looking a little sunburned, but mostly happy. <laughs> Did you have a good week? Yeah. yeah, awesome. Well, you know how much I like words and where words came from. I think it's so interesting. So this word, mission, mission. The word, whenever you see, almost whenever you see, M-I-S-S -S in something, well, the first thing is miss, right? Miss, like if I'm going to miss you, it means that you're leaving, right? Mm -hmm. Missed. And if I, mm, I would never do this, I don't think, for me, but if I were to fire a missile, because I'm not in the military, right? If I were to fire a missile, what would I be doing? The missile would be leaving. Yeah. When you see that word, um, that little part of the word miss, often it means that things are sent out in some sort of way. So when we call it a mission trip, the word mission is telling us that we are sent out of this church building, right, to do something good. And we were pretty far out. We went about, gosh, how many miles was it? 335 miles away. We went way out, right? Yeah. But what's that? One way, yes. 335 miles to Machias area in Maine. So we were sent way out. But the truth is that every time that we come here, to Aldersgate, at the end, we get dismissed, we get sent out. And just outside this door, or if you are at home, just outside the door of your house is the place that God has called you to do good things for God, right? So even though we kind of made a big deal about it and did something special and drove 335 miles and did construction, that doesn't mean that just happens one week a year in the summer. It means that every time after we spend time with God in worship, and we are sent out, we go into the mission field, right? The place where we show God's love. Okay. Well, I'm tempted to say that you should stay up here with me because otherwise I'm going to miss you. But I think we'll be okay because we'll be in the same room. We'll be in the same room. And Savannah's going to share a little um, memory uh, about the trip with us this morning too, which will be great. So we'll see you back up here soon. Let's have a quick prayer and let's pray. God, we thank you that we are called to spend time with you one-on-one -on -one and in worship with the church family. And that's refreshing and wonderful, but always we are dismissed. We are sent out to be your hands and feet in this world. God, help us to do that the best that we can, even though we're not perfect and not the strongest thing and not the richest thing, but God, we're willing. So dismiss us when we leave here to go be your hands and feet in the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. Haha. <laughs> All right. Yes. Our scripture this morning is a verse that we used for devotions one of the nights on the mission trip coming to us from Philippians and another team member. Hello. Hello. Am I on? Okay. Uh, my name is Sally Meredith, and in Machias, I was one of the cooks. Uh, this morning, I'm reading from Philippians 2, the first 11 verses. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, in any, if any comfort in his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in, the, in very nature God, did not consider equality of God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. 
Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let's all stand and sing the servant song. Stand as you're able. going to be reporting out from the main mission team in just a moment, so I'm going to ask Savannah, George, and Sam to be ready to come right on up. Uh, we'll hear from them, but the question of the day is, have you ever been on a church mission trip uh, or a mission trip, a service trip like that? Raise your hand if you have in the room. Lots of folks. Fantastic. Actually, most. That's wonderful. And the good news is, the good news is that the trip that we do every year, this was the 18th year we did it, is available to anyone who would like to come. We had it from age 11 to age 89 on the trip this year. People of all skill levels, some just incredible carpenters who have all the answers, and some of us who can hold a paintbrush because we've done watercolors or something. Like that whole range, some people who just picked up trash and some people who know how to like carve beautifully sculpted fitted pieces uh, just so that the angles all come together and I can't even tell you. So there's room for everyone on this trip. Um, you'll see at the end of the presentation that we're going again the same week next summer. And so if this is something that appeals to you, um, you can start to, start to make your plans and there's a place for you. All right. So, Savannah, George, and Sam, in that order, you need to bring up a stick mic. Um, oh, I see it. Yes, so Savannah, come on down. And I've just asked them to share one story that was meaningful to them about the trip, just for a minute or so. Here, Savannah. Let's check this. Check. We'll turn the power on. Come up and look at yourself in the camera there so you know people can see you. And hold it nice and close to your mouth, but don't touch. All right. Um, Introduce yourself first and your age and everything. I'm Savannah Helm. Um, I'm 16. I'm going to my junior year of high school. Um, one thing I would like to really share is um, I was up on the roof this year for my first year ever, and it was lots of fun. And I wasn't expecting me, as young as I am, to give advice to Kevin Spicer. <laughs> what did you tell him, Savannah? I told him that he needs to be patient and work with the water and ice shield on the roof. And he was going... <laughs> <laughs> 
He was just working really fast and trying to get it all done. But I noticed that you just need to be patient sometimes. And that was a moment he really need to learn how to be patient. <laughs> I think uh, so Kevin may be watching from his cabin in Machias. Yes, you should have come in person to defend yourself, buddy. <laughs> Anything else, Savannah, or is that your favorite? Um, working with the puzzles with everyone. Um, Sam helped me a lot with the puzzles because I'm not a huge puzzle person. So. Awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. Thank you, Savannah. All right, George, give her a hand. I'm, I'm excited to go and look at the Facebook comments. Uh, so Kevin Spicer and his family have a cabin up at the campground in Machias, and so they stayed. They're still up there um, watching. So I expect to see some comments about that one. Why don't you introduce yourself, George? Make sure you can see yourself in the camera right here. Oh, sorry. Hi, yeah. I'm George Schofield. Uh, I'm 74 years old. <laughs> and um, I think... Uh, <laughs> For a 16-year-old to tell Kevin Spicer to put it in park when he's on the roof is particularly funny. Um, the, the job I want to talk about is um, a job where we put uh, a uh, access ramp, handicapped access ramp, on a trailer. Uh, this wasn't planned. This was an emergency. The man in the trailer is in hospice care. The emergency arose because the uh, fire department told him that they could no longer help him get out of his trailer because his existing access ramp was not safe. It was falling down. And so uh, we had to put a plan together, build the access, put a deck up, build the access ramp. But prior to that, the whole site had to be cleaned of trash, probably, would you say, close to maybe six, seven months worth of trash in the garage? I was thinking it was 40 years worth of trash, George. <laughs> I was on that detail. Yeah, it, it, it was really a tough situation to work in. What I took away from that is we finished putting the last board on the ramp. Now, this is a man that, was pro that is probably... 6'5", would you say? 6'5", 6'6", six, 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 a big guy. He had not been out of that trailer, I'm guessing, in months. Because he couldn't, he didn't have an egress. It wasn't safe enough for him. When we put the last board in the ramp, we just took a break for lunch. And all of a sudden, this big guy appears in the, in the doorway and everybody's scrambling over there. There's no handrails, there's tools in the way. His wife and his nephew helped him walk down that ramp for the first time. The look on his face was just amazing. Just amazing. Uh, he was able to get outside. Um, it was incredibly touching. That's what stuck with me about the Moonshee trip. Thank you, George. Yeah, it was beautiful. I was on that site, too. Um, I'm Sam Fisher, 44 years old. Um, I have another couple of weeks. Well, oh. it's like, oh, 44. <laughs> um, done with high school and all that. Yeah. It was fun um, seeing the team gel. There's... Um, a couple dozen of us that went and we got a chance for people to put their skills to work and then a chance for kids to learn new stuff um, using saws for demolishing things and using some tools for putting things back together painting scraping there's lots of stuff that we do but it just is a nice environment to learn new things like Savannah was saying she got to do some stuff that um, she doesn't usually get to do and um, I did see a bald eagle. I know there's some bird watchers who like that. Um, and we got to see Canada too, uh, had some ice cream. But it was just great building relationships with the team and um, seeing them learn and grow and learn new skills. 
and like George said, to see the immediate impact on some of the families that we helped out there. It was really great. So if you have a chance next year, put it on your calendar. Thank you, Sammy. You can take that. I, uh, one of the things I love about going on this trip every year is that we just have so much time together. And especially since this pandemic sort of busted up the normal way we do church around here. Like so often, if you come into the building, and especially if you're remote, you know, we, we assemble for worship on Sunday mornings and we see each other and some of us are able to hang out afterwards and visit a little bit. But a lot of times, especially before church, I'm really busy running around. I can't stop and visit and get to know you very well. And after church, you may run right out the door again. Don't get to visit. To spend a whole week with just this time. And sometimes the time is standing around waiting for a delivery of something. And so you just have to sit there and talk to the person who is next to you. And it's just so wonderful to get to know people better. And just to give you a snapshot of another precious thing about that time. One of my favorite memories was um, we scraped and painted the side of a house. And, you know, so a bunch of, there's people up on ladders, there's people on the ground, and we didn't have our radio. And uh, so Sam, because we had had some pretty nice tunes early in the week, we had seen to that, but they had left, which was too bad. The tunes had to go home. And so you pulled your car like around the side of the house and open like old school how you used to play music outside you know open the doors of the car and turn the volume all the way up but the only music well he had about three cds in the car and there was a hamilton cd and we happened to have a whole lot of hamilton fans that musical um there who like basically have it memorized because they're teenagers and this is what they did with their time five years ago so we're up there on ladders, on the ground, singing all of the lyrics to Hamilton. And there's like back and forth parts and different people are like singing different parts and harmonizing. And like, it was just wonderful. It was just this great moment. Um, so it just happened that we were all Hamilton fans. And I just love that. And we don't get that when we're so busy and rushing around. There's no way to reproduce that. So I wanted to share that moment. And just finally, George referenced the um, family for whom we put on the ramp. And for me, that was just, a, I've, I've never, <clears throat> never, I've been doing mission trips since I've been 16 years old, which is over 30 years. I have never seen such an immediate response, you know, that within minutes, within minutes, that guy was going down that ramp. Um, his wife wrote us a thank you note, and so I'll read it to you. And I'll put it on the table in the back for folks in the room. Uh, our our uh, leader there for Neighbors Helping Neighbors in uh, Machias is named Harper Dean. It says, to Mr. Dean and crew, thank you so much for all your hard work and kindness. <clears throat> without, you, without you all, my husband would never be able to leave our home and let the sun shine on his faith, face and breathe the fresh air again before he passes away. May God bless you all as he has us for bringing you all into our lives. You are truly angels. Love Mike, Kim, uh, and their pets, Star and Itty Bit. So I just wanted to share that. You can take a look. Yeah. I think this is, this is worth framing just so, you know, we can recall that. That's just wonderful. All right, so we are going to watch a slideshow um, sharing on PowerPoint, hopefully with people at home with no problems, right? No trolls in the system. It's about seven minutes, um, but you'll see some of the things that we described already this morning.
<clears throat> All right, fantastic. Um, I think that we're going to go for a rousing chorus of Take Me Up to Machias, um, which is sung to the tune of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And so if you have gone on the trip and remember, or if you were there, let's see what we can do. Do we put, we didn't do the words? Okay, you go ahead. Do you want me to line out the words? Oh, sorry. Okay. to adjust the lyrics to that song because it used to say there was no cell phone service and no Wi-Fi and now we say there is some cell phone service and some Wi-Fi. Not enough to uh, be streaming your YouTubes very well though. All right. So, um, thank you. I hope you all got a lot from that and if you didn't see on the final slide the trip dates next year are Sunday, July 23rd through Saturday, July 29th, 2023. All right, well, it is time for an offering. Uh, if you're watching at home, there's a link in the comments that's dropping here. There's a QR code there on the table in the foyer, and there's an old-fashioned offering plate. If you do old-fashioned, you know, uh, actual fungible uh, token, like cash. Yes. All right. We take all kinds. Thank you, and thank you for uh, blessing this ministry and your encouragement. Um, a reminder for some announcements that uh, Vacation Bible School is in three weeks. Oh my gosh, I see some Vacation Bible School people in here today. We are so excited. The team of teachers is amazing. The decorations are coming together, but I'm going to be very straight with you. The number of kids we have signed up is not my favorite number. I want three times as much. Okay, so I'm very serious. This is how it happens. We have a very nice sign in the center of town, but if nobody says, hey, I go to that church, you should go to that vacation Bible school and makes the personal connection, people drive right by it. So if there are people in your life between preschool and fifth grade who want to come in the mornings, uh, the last week in August is the 22nd, I think, the week of the 22nd, 9 to noon, You've got to talk to them. It's your invitation that's going to bring them. So let's see what God does with that. There is a link in the comments to Vacation Bible School registration. Also, uh, one final announcement uh, before we have a special presentation. Um, this Saturday night, there's a private party happening in this space here. Sometimes we rent our building to earn extra income to use our building wisely that way. Um, there's a cleanup crew that's needed at 10 p.m., 10 p.m., so if anybody can be a part, please talk to me. Um, Sam and I have a band gig that night and can't be here. Um, but cleanup crews this coming Saturday night at 10 p.m. It seems like a fairly reasonable bunch. So don't be, sometimes the parties get crazy. This is not a crazy bunch. Saturday at 10 p.m. All right, D. Let's, let me get you a mic, D. Oh. Sorry, I'm off camera. That's boring. All right, try that. We're right up in it. Okay. Good morning. There's some members of SPRC here. If you want to come up with me, right, there you go. anyone from SPRC, come on up. Just, like, love the microphone. All right, I will. As they say in showbiz, love the mic. So come on over. Let's get close. So on behalf of the SPRC... And the Aldersgate family and friends, we want to thank Johnny Nichols. Oh, it's for me. It's <laughs> I knew you'd come up without knowing. <laughs> um, we want to thank you for keeping us in music during worship um, since Daniel left, for sharing your gifts of leadership and all of your musical gifts, for taking requests, for pivoting at the last moment, for always graciously and with a smile doing whatever needed to be done and for assisting in bringing David on board. 
and you have been a great blessing in this role. And we're very lucky that you're also part of our church family. So next week we'll be sitting with you and while we sing. So this is a small thank you from us. And don't run out after worship because we have a special surprise in the back near the cake table for you. Okay. Thank you. Don't spend that all in one place, buddy. Oh my goodness. You had, to give, you had to do something good for Johnny. We'd do something good for you anyway, Johnny, but you know. Yes. All right. So um, hopefully there have been some prayer requests coming in this morning. Yes, no? Haven't seen any? Okay, that's good. Everybody's at the beach. We understand. We like the beach. Um, but I do have a number that came in uh, before the service. So let's be in an attitude of prayer. God, it is really wonderful and refreshing and encouraging to feel that we have served you with the talents that we have, such as they are, to the best of our abilities, to feel that we have made a difference. God, I ask that this presentation that we saw this morning was an encouragement to each of us that with the gifts that you have given us, we can help and we can bring joy, and we can bring hope to people's lives. Help us to be people who are always in mission wherever we are as soon as we go out, that we remember that we serve in your name. God, you know the prayer requests in our communities. I lift lift to you first those that are unspoken and unshared, maybe not even understood well by those who hold them. God, we understand that you know us better than we know ourselves and that you hear these prayers. To them, we add prayers for those who are struggling with or in recovery from addiction and those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety, God. We ask for healing and restoration. We pray for those who are grieving loss. We continue in prayer for Marie LaRose's friends, Marie Patrice Mass and Donna. God, we ask that you would provide powerfully and quickly for our new d- music director, David Hahn, and his husband, Young Gook, uh, who are relocating to this area, God, who, who need both an apartment and a job for Young Gook. Please, God, uh, show, show off a little bit. We're waiting in eager anticipation, God, for you to provide. We pray for North Reading resident John Wiklansky, a member of the Congregational Church after a seizure, um, and for his wife, Ellen, who's caring for him. We pray for all of us navigating COVID during this maybe sort of final wave-ish, especially for the Montez family and for those on the main mission team. We pray for Marilyn Kennedy, Dan Kennedy's mom, who is recovering from surgery after suffering a broken hip. God, there's many joys among us. We celebrate being able to travel, to move around for vacations. We celebrate the mission trip, the safety you provided to us, the team building, and uh, rejoice over the lives of those we served. We pray for Vacation Bible School in three, week and, three weeks and ask that you would um, enable our invitations, that you would bless them and uh, bless those who are organizing and leading. We pray for the Costantino family who are in Utah right now, moving their daughter Dee into her new home, and we ask a blessing over Dee as she starts this new chapter in her life. God, finally this morning, we celebrate Elaine and Cindy Tanner's wedding anniversary and ask that you would add many years of blessing onto their happy and fruitful marriage. Thank you for hearing our prayers, God, and now we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. All right. Let's all stand and join in singing the closing hymn, Lord Whose Love and Humble Service. <laughs> 